Hi and welcome to The Daily Show. I'm your host, April Zamora. And today, continuing with Health Week, we will be talking about something called somatoform disorder. We have specialist Dr. Nicole Nishida, and she will be explaining to us exactly what this is. After that, we'll bring out our special guest, who is actually suffering from this disorder, Justin. Nicole, welcome. Thanks, it's nice to be here. So, can you please explain to us, what is somatoform disorder? Well, somatoform disorder is a mental disorder that copies actual symptoms of diseases or injury. Well, what do you mean by copy? What I mean to say is that the person diagnosed with somatoform disorder is actually completely fine, but the mind, but the mind makes them believe that they are going to be sick and the body will react to it. I see. I think we're getting it. So it's not all the same, right? There are different types. Indeed, there are. There's conversion disorder, there is body dysmorphic disorder, and there is hypochondria disorder. I see. And what is hypochondria? Hypochondria disorder is where the person will experience some sort of everyday symptom, maybe a cough, maybe a sneeze, and believe it's something more. And so they'll search it out. I see. About the other two, what are they? Well, conversion disorder is actually rather hard to treat. Maybe one day a person will be fine, and the next that maybe they'll be paralyzed in the arm, or they can't be, or they won't be able to see. Mm -hmm. And in body dysmorphic disorder, it also includes anorexia and bulimia, where the patient will exhibit ideas that they don't look right, and they have to compensate or correct it to where some are indie being bulimia, and some will be addicted to plastic surgery. This all sounds very serious. How would you treat it? Well, the best treatment is psychi psychiatric therapy, which seems to work the best out of all of them. The next is um, hypnosis, but as you know, not everybody can be hypnotized. Right. And hypnosis c it doesn't actually have a calculated limit. Like, maybe the next day a person will experience their symptoms again, while well, maybe a couple of years later they will. And then the last is not really recommended because hypochondria and pain disorders seem so dramatic in the people. Mm, the medication they will take will increase and then sometimes they will overdose. Um. Son of a biscuit-eating bulldog. What the French toast? Did you think I wouldn't find out about your little doo-doo head cootie queen? Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? Pickle you, kumquat! You're overreacting. No, Bill, overreacting was when I put your convertible into a wood chipper. Stinky McStink face! Fabulous! New Orbit Raspberry Mint cleans another dirty map. For a good clean feeling, no matter what. life, you know, because always in the sudden rush of being sick or feeling like I'm gonna be sick, it's like I missed out on so much things I could have done. It's like, my friends are leaving me, everyone's forgetting about me. It's because I'm always thinking that I'm gonna get sick. And I hate that. It's like, it cuts into my life so bad that I stopped even going to school. It's like, just the fear of going to school, I might get sick there, and I don't know. I really don't know what to do, and I think it's about time I need some help. So, let's bring out Justin. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Okay, Justin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your life? My life? 
Well, it's hard living life when you're always thinking you're sick. It interferes a lot with my social life because my friends always think I'm lying all the time. I don't know what to tell them because I really feel that I'm sick. Though doctors all say nothing's wrong. I think you're always sick. Well, to me, I don't really know. I've always been like this and I was afraid of getting sick, but it always seemed like I was. I was switching doctors left and right and they said nothing was wrong. I never really believed them until I actually started losing my friends. So, is this normal for a hypochondriac? Justin's case is ra rather a lower level of hypochondria, but he does sh show the obvious signs of being a hypochondriac. The extremities of being a hypochondriac is constantly having to look up your symptoms and having to try and find out what you have, which usually causes them to think that they have other symptoms that they don't actually have. Is it kind of cold in here? You guys don't feel that? No. No? No. I can I have your jacket? No. <laughs> Why not? Because it's my jacket. Can, can I have it? Or no. Uh, what are you doing? No. Stop. You guys, uh, it's my jacket. I earned this. I'm cold. Uh, I want we'll it. Let me right get back. it. Come on, nigga. You guys. It never gets old, huh? Nope. It kind of makes you want to break into song. Yep. I love the mountains. I love the clear blue skies. I love big bridges. I love when great whites fly. I love the whole world. And all its sights and sounds. boom dee da da boom dee da da boom dee da da boom dee da da I love the oceans. I love real dirty things. I love to go fast. I love Egyptian kings. I love the whole world. And all this craziness. I love tornadoes. I love arachnids. I love my magma. I love the giant squids. I love the whole world. It's such a brilliant place. And we're back. For those of you who have missed it, we've been talking with Justin, who's been suffering a long time from cyberchondria. So Justin, do you really feel that you're ready for treatment? Yes, I think that would be great. And I'm <laughs> so down. <laughs> that's excellent. We will set you up with a doctor right after the show. Well, that's all the time we have. Please tune in tomorrow at 8, and we'll have a new report on schizophrenia. And don't worry, Nicole will get her jacket back. I look stupid 